Welcome back to another live here with Design Bundles. We are so excited that you guys are all here. Not only are we making paper flowers today, we have a mega giveaway going on. So make sure you guys stay tuned for our Q&A section because we're going to give you all of the details. And I promise you, you don't want to miss it. So today we are making paper flowers. And this is from a bundle that we currently have going on. And you can make tons of different types of paper flowers. But I'm going to show you guys how to get the most out of cutting these out with your Cricut, with your paper, and all of those things, sizing it. And then we're going to put them in this cute little shadow box and create like a little gift for dad for Father's Day. But you could totally put your kiddos' names on here, the letters, all of the things. Now, while you guys are joining, let me know where you guys are from. What are you guys crafting? Are you guys have any big plans for the summer? I want to know all of the details. Also, please let me know in the comments below. You can give me some love, give me some thumbs up. I need to know if you guys can hear me today. We have a little bit of, we're testing out something with a mic today. So if you guys could let me know, like I said, give me some hearts, give me some thumbs up. Let me know that you guys can hear me or if I need to bring that volume up. So if I need to bring it up, just write out up and uh, we'll be good to go. So let me know what you guys think. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right. So as you guys are joining, I'm going to kind of let you guys get in here. So while we do, let's go ahead and head on over to designbundles.net so I can show you the bundle that I'm using today. So there is an amazing bundle here. It's called the Love to Craft Bundle Volume 8. There's only three days left on this, and it's currently $24, and it is a $315 value. This is perfect for anybody, but if you're just starting out with your die cutting machine or sublimation, this is an amazing bundle. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll through here a little bit and show you some of the files that are actually in included in here. And we even have some tutorials that are still coming from this bundle, so if you guys just this we have some more stuff coming as well as um i was trying to think here i was trying to see so i can show you guys a little sneak peek of one that i've worked on so we have one coming from the glow forge here and then i do believe i've got some stickers these stickers are my favorite guys these are not what we're using today, but I have to show you. If you are a crafter, you have to check out this bundle. These stickers are so cute. I mean, check these out. So, so stinking cute. Now, think about it. You can put these on your tumblers or you can still sublimate with these. So if you want to put this on a T-shirt, you want to use your printable vinyl, printable HTV, all of those things you can still do with this, not only just stickers, but you can make these for your planner. But I am obsessed. I have to say, this has got to be one of my favorites. Look, they even have a little Cricut cutting machine here or die cutting machine, if you will, a little cup with paint brushes. It's just adorable. So you guys have to check that one out. One of my favorites. A great monogram one for keychains. You know how we all love to do the keychains here. So cute. Love this one as well. Super, super cute there. And then let's see here. If you guys are into making the pins, so the little epoxy pins, we've got the boxes in here. So you can do that. It's got the little um, ultimate template bundle here, if you will. So cute. And like I said, just so many more. We even have some of the wraps. If you guys are wanting to get into the epoxy pins, those are included in here. This bundle is for everybody. Like I said, whether you're making sublimation gifts, look at this, sublimation projects, whatever you got going on, Glowforge, Cricut, Silhouette, you name it, I swear it's in this bundle. So if you guys are getting ready for Father's Day, you might want to check this one out as well. Super cute files that you could make. Once again, you could print out a bunch of these um, on printable vinyl and create some stickers that you could put all over like a hydro flask or something like that or dad's Yeti. You could create them some decals. You don't have to just think about t-shirts with this. So think outside of the box, but these would be great for aprons, um, a koozie for dad. Maybe you want to make a tumbler, but I'm actually going to use one of the files out of here. So you see that um, this right here is actually labeled as a PNG. But I'm going to use this one right here, the DADA. I'm using this one as an SVG. So I brought this into Cricut, and I'll show you all that here in just a minute. So we're going to be using that today. And then I'll come right over here and show you guys the flower bundle that is included. All right, so let me go ahead and bring it up here. Oh, one more sticker. I swear, one more sticker. If you guys are into unicorns, this one is so cute as well. Super stinking cute. You can create a whole little sticker sheet with that one as well. 
All right, so let me right here. So this is the flower bundle that we're using today. Now I will be doing another tutorial, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that because I'm going to cut out a few of these. So that way I can show you guys the process of how each one of them would look and how you would work with those. So there's lots of different tools on the market whenever it comes to working with paper flowers and I'll get into that in a second. But what's really cool about this bundle is it includes the leaves and the, um, you know, the little pieces of, I, I want to say filigree, you know what I mean? But I think it's just leaves. But there's so many cute ones in here. So I'm really excited about that. Lots of different varieties. So if you guys really look here, you can see there's tons of different styles inside of this one. So this is going to be the bundle that we're using today. And so hello from California. Welcome, everybody. I'm so excited that you guys are here. Once again, if you guys are just now joining, we're making paper flowers today. And uh, we have a mega giveaway going on, and we're going to announce that at the Q&A. So make sure you guys stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop my camera down really quick, just so I can show you the supplies that I'm using today. And then we will head on over to Cricut Design Space. So let me go ahead and get my supplies here while we get ready to drop that camera. Let me see if I can get that to go full screen. Give me just a second. First time, let's see. Hello, Design Bundles community. Hi, DIY Alex. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have you. All right, so let me see if I can get my screen to go full screen just so I can show you guys all of... Let me try to drop this screen down. Give me two seconds to get the screen down. Let me see if I can get it down. Bear with me for just a second. All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, there we go. All right, so give me just a second. We are trying to get this screen dropped down. For some reason, my X is just not, there we go. I got it. Okay, so let's go over the supplies. Once again, um, is paper flower day? Yes. Uh, we are so excited. I love paper flowers and we're going to make big ones too. So y'all stay tuned on the channel because we've got paper flowers for days coming. So y'all stay tuned. All right. So what I'm using here is my blue mat. When it comes to working with these paper flowers, it's going to be a lot better to use that blue mat because it's a light grip map and you're not going to struggle to take off that cardstock. Now, when it comes to paper flowers, which I'm going to show you over there, you can ac accomplish getting two on an eight and a half by 11, or you can get four on a 12 by 12, which I'm cutting three, depending on how big you're working and all of that. But I do love the 12 by 12s. And this one right here, so I use a mixture between cardstock or you can use the paper pads. But if you use the paper pads, you want one that's more thicker. So this is technically, technically to me, this is cardstock. All right, so, and then the really cool thing about this one is it is double-sided. So you can play around with double-sided card stocks. So that way you're going to get a two-toned effect. So I've actually made some right here. I'm trying to see if I could tell. Here we go. So this is the same paper. So one, you can see it looks purple. One looks blue. So I flipped them inside out. So, so this is a double-sided and you're going to get two different effects. So you could create an ombre effect if you, whenever you do that. All right. So we're using the card stock. And then I'm using my hot glue gun today, and I am using my Lynn Lily hot glue gun, which is right here in just a glue stick. Um, you could definitely use some Tombow, which is my favorite. You guys could use a glue like this if you guys wanted to. Hopefully you guys can see that there. But um, you can use a glue stick, whatever you want to use. But like I highly recommend just using a hot glue gun because you're going to get it so much faster. Now, a few things that you can do. There's been so many tricks over the years when it comes to rolling these paper flowers is, for example, you can get yourself a quilling tool. Now, I've linked you guys one down below. That's my favorite. Cricut used to sell one, but they don't anymore. That's what I'm using today. But you could definitely get away with using the weeding tool that just has the straight um, point on it. You could definitely just use that. What I do when I, whenever I do that, I'll actually add a glue dot to it so that way it grabs adhesive so when i go to roll it'll it'll start that roll for me so if you don't have something i've seen people do it with a bobby pin as well as tweezers so you can get your tweezers here and you're able to roll as well with that which like i said i'll kind of show you that here in just a second and then whenever it comes to paper flowers you can get little tools like this so this one from fiskars is made for paper flowers so it's got these edges so it's a little bit different than what you see from a normal scraper. So this is not just, you know, the scraper for our adhesive vinyl. It has these edges on here, which helps curl that paper. So if you were going to curl over those edges, as well as a bone folder, you can do a bone folder. All right, last but not least is the uh, shadow box. So today, this one that I'm using is a six by six. The one I use the most is either a six by six or an eight by eight. So depending on 
what size and how big you're using your flowers, but I'm able to get nine flowers in this guy and it's going to look super cute. Once again, you could put somebody's name on here. For graduation, you guys could put the number 22. 22 on here um, and gift that for graduation. We have lots of different files too, where you could cut out like a graduation quote and mother's quote or all sorts of fun things. All right. So we've got these. So let's go ahead and head on over to, let me go ahead and get my screen up here. Give me just two seconds to pull open my like a design space. Once again, as you guys are a cute idea, thank you so much. Um, once again, if you guys are just now joining us, say hello, tell us where you guys are from. All right, let me go ahead and pull open Cricut Design Space. All right, so I think I've got Cricut Design Space here. Here we go, perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this camera back up so you guys can see me while we work along here. Now, these are the two files that I'm using today, like I talked about. This one actually came out of the PNG. This was one of the sublimation files, and you can actually still use it as an SVG, so I'm really excited about that. So I brought that one in. And then I brought in this flower. So if you guys want to know, this is in folder number six. So this is the sixth flower. Just so if you guys want to remember, this is my favorite paper flower. Out of all the paper flowers and all the different designs over the years, this one has been one of my absolute favorite ones for creating these shadow boxes. I love it. It's just super easy, which I'll show you. All right. So when you bring in your flower, this is what I like to do. Over the years, this is a question I have seen so many times that it's like, well, what size did you make this flower? What size did you make this flower? And this is how I determine this. So what I do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of the way. And this may come in a lot smaller. I'd already kind of sized this up, but whatever, you, we're gonna size it out here in a second. All right, so what I do is I go up here to shapes because I'm gonna essentially bring in my paper. So say for example, and I'm gonna bring in a square. Say for example that I was using eight and a half by 11 paper. I'm gonna unlock my paper, which is the this button right here. You can also do that by hitting the lock up here at the top. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in 8.5. All right. And then I'm going to put in 11. All right. So this is my paper. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lock that. And then I'm going to go ahead and change that to pink. So say my pink, my paper was pink, just so I can visually see my flower on top. Now, if it's going behind, we're just going to go to a range here and we're going to bring it to the front. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to size this out, right? So I've already done that here. And then I'm going to come over here to duplicate. And then that way I can see how many I can fit. And so if you need to rotate this at all to get these to fit. So for example, if I need to rotate it like this to get it absolutely perfect, I'm going to do that. So say, for example, once again, this is perfect. I'm happy with it. What I like to do before I even go to continue, I'll, I'll connect these two. So I'm going to select this one. I'm going to hold down shift and select the next one. And then I would hit attach. So these two will cut at the same spot. That way I don't have to fuss once I get to the mat about moving them around. And then what I can do, I'm going to hide this just so I can show you. So if we went to the mat and I was cutting these eight and a half by 11, I'm going to tell it I'm cutting on the mat. I'm going to hit continue. And then from here, so say, for example, I needed to cut out 30 of these guys. All right. So half of 30 is 15 because I'm getting two per. I could actually come up here to where it says um, project copies. Go 15 and hit, hit apply. So this is going to give me all 15. Now I don't need to color coordinate them because say I know I need two pinks. I need two blues. I can just load my two pieces of pink paper. So I don't need to worry about all that. I can have them all the same color and I can do all of that right here. So that's that. So I just wanted to go and do that in case you're using eight and a half by 11 because over the years I have used a lot of eight and a half by 11. Sometimes it's easier to get those packages that comes with like 100 papers and and stuff like that. So in case that's the way you're doing it, I wanted to show you. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and detach this. And so I'm gonna change my paper here because we're actually using a 12 by 12. So I'm gonna come up here to width, change up to 12. And then I'm gonna unlock this here. And 12, enter. there we go, and I'm gonna lock it back. All right, so here is my 12 by 12. So now what I'm gonna do is you can see here, I can actually, I'm gonna select this one select this one and hit duplicate. So I'm duplicating both at the same time. And then you can see how many I can fit like this. So I can actually fit four on a 12 by 12. And I would do the same thing. I would attach all of these by selecting like this, hitting attach once again. And that way I take it straight to the mat once again, say I need to cut out 30 of these. I would divide it by four and that's how many project copies I'm gonna do. So super easy to do it like that. And the way that I determine my sizes 
how many I can fit on the paper. So I start playing around with it. And once I figure out this is gonna be the size that's gonna give me the most, I'll delete everything else. And then I will you know, start to duplicate the correct size. So if this is the one I'm going with, and that's just how I play around with it. Once I know that size and I have all of this figured out because I'm gonna make a bunch of these, I'll save this. So I'll come up here, I'll hit save and I'll save it so I can come back to that project later. So just a few tips for me whenever it comes to making these paper flowers. Now, another thing is you could definitely, you know, drag this out and you can make a really big flower as well and fit that on there. So you can do one per 12 by 12 if you wanted to as well. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and delete that out of here and let me go ahead and duplicate this two more times because we need three for my page, like I said. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one right here, duplicate. I'm going to get one down here. I'm going to get about as close as I can. Something about like that. Maybe scooch this guy down just a little bit. And then I'm going to hit um, shift, select all of these pieces here, hit attach, and then you see my little bundle of three. All right. So there's that. And then as for the word dada, um, dada, it's just weird for me to say that. So I'm like D-A-D-A. -D -A. So I've got my little thing here. This is going to be the front. How did I determine that? What I did was I just took my tape measure here and I just went across the top of this. Now I know it's a six by six box, but we have that little bit of the edge of the border, which I'll show you guys again in a minute whenever I drop everything down. But um, that's what I did. And I went ahead and just went with, I could have done a five, but I went four and a half. So I wasn't getting too close to the edges there. So that's how I determined that. So this is ready to go as well. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to cut this out at the same time. That way I can load two mats and be ready. So this one's going to be vinyl. So let's go ahead and hit make it. And then we're going to tell it we're cutting on the mat. We're going to hit continue. And then I'm going to go ahead and do my paper flowers first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. So I'm just clicking on it here. And then we're going to hit continue. And then I'm going to go ahead and choose my materials. All right. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining. We are so excited that you're here with us. Is there a ratio of some math that you know? Now, I will tell you guys here in just a second. Let me go back to the page. Let me just hit cancel so it's easy. So if you guys want to, because that way, if you're watching this again and again, you can come back and you can, I'm just going to go ahead and do this really fast. It's only going to take us two seconds. So if you're watching this, you can come back, pause it again, and that way you guys can get all of that information. So I'm going to go ahead and hit detach. Since I've already figured this out for you, because you can do two with the same number here, you can do two on the eight and a half by 11, you could do three to four on a 12 by 12. The numbers I have for you is 5.711 wide. You could definitely pause and screenshot this when you go back to re-record or right now you can just screenshot with your phone. So you can do, sorry, 5.711 wide by 5.493 high. Once again, if you replay this, you can definitely screenshot that. And so that's what all of them are gonna be. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and select those again. We're gonna hit attach and we'll go back to make it. We're on the mat, continue. And then we're gonna go back to our card stock because we're doing that first, continue. And then we're gonna choose our material. Now I like to, for example, I'm using medium card stock. That's what I'm gonna choose. If you're using heavy, make sure you're choosing heavy. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and choose medium card stock and we're ready to load. So I'm gonna go ahead and make this a full screen. So that way, hopefully you guys can see this really quick. So give me two, there we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna load this right here. There we go. We're just gonna get it loaded. Now, remember when it comes to card stock, this is another thing that I get asked, I've been asked over the years is, it is important. Maybe every other cut, maybe after every cut, depending on how your blade is, how new it is and all of that, you may need to stop in between your cuts. So once I unload this one and load my next card stock, make sure you guys stop, take out your blade, push your button a few times. You may need to carefully, you know, just grab your little blade and kind of brush it off there a little bit. You can always blow on it if you want to and then put it back in because when you're cutting out cardstock, sometimes it gets those little papers and that can cause your little funky cuts if you get that along the way. And if it starts to jam at all when you're making paper flowers, it's time for a new blade. Remember when it comes to cardstock, for vinyl, cardstock is way harder on your blade than vinyl. But what's really cool is you can actually save those blades and use them for your um, HTV. So whenever your blade starts to duel, and if you ever notice that for your paper, it's still really good for HTV. So you can always have a blade. What I like to do is the housing. So I have a silver one here. There's a gold and there's a pink. Sometimes I, I designate my pink one to, you know, say, so 
all right, my gold one will be vinyl because it's premium, vinyl and HDD. And then my silver one here is for paper only. So that way you're in, you keep those blades separate. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit go here. Just thought I would share some tips along the way. I know when it comes to paper flowers, there's been a lot of questions over the years and right now it's trending again. So I definitely wanna help with all of those tips and tricks. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and start to cut this out really quickly. And so in the meantime, nice tip. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everybody watching from New Jersey. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So while we do that, I'll go over the tools just one more time in case you guys are just now joining. And I can also show you guys rolling a paper flower. So I actually pre-cut a bunch of these here so I can actually show you guys rolling one of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop my camera down here really quick. And then I will uh, talk about these little pieces here. So this one, for example, the way that I'm going to do my flowers, I don't need anything like this or a bone folder. So if you were going to curl the outside of your edges, for example, when you were doing a bigger one. So if I cut this out with a big 12 by 12, I may want to curl those edges like this. You can do the same thing with a bone folder. You could go by all of those pieces like so. But you don't need to do that because I'm going to show you a super, super easy way to do it with these ones. All right, so these are a two-toned flower. So hopefully you guys can see that there, two-toned. So when it comes with um, a double-sided cardstock, whichever way you flip, whatever is going on the inside is what's gonna be the color of your flower. So whatever the inside, so when you roll it, that is the color because you're gonna uh, fold your petals backwards. All right, so let me go ahead and let's see here. Let's go ahead and get started here. So we're gonna start with this little um, quilling tool here. So the way that this quilling tool works is there's actually a slit in here. So it looks like the um, just straight weeding tool, but it has a little slit in here. And you're just going to slide it between your paper like so. So I've got it like that. And then you're just gonna go ahead and start to twirl. So at this part, you really wanna try to keep it nice and tight. I don't have anything too crazy, but as I'm going around, I'm also pinching it. So I'm trying to keep it round because it'll wanna kind of go square if you will like oval so what i like to do is i just kind of press on it every once in a while to keep it kind of come in here so hopefully you guys can see so that way it kind of keeps its shape of going around now sometimes with your quilling tool it just is what it is now there's electric ones too that run on a battery that you can kind of speed it up i've never had success with those so if you guys have let me know down below for sure and also if you guys do make paper flowers what is your favorite way of doing this do you use a quilling tool do you use your tweezers do you use a bobby pin or do you just use your hands so um once i get so far I simply just start rolling it. So I've already got it nice and tight. So hopefully you guys can see that there. So I've already got it nice and tight. You just want to keep it nice and tight the whole way through. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep going all the way around. Now, whenever it comes to starting, I also want to point something out. You want to start with these paper flowers right here on this piece. So this is going to be the bottom, the circle piece right here. And this is going to be... Oops, let me stop this. I almost messed up. Hold on. Stop, 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 stop. I pushed go, so it was just taken off again. Let's see. Hold on. This is what happens when you're live. I'm like, stop. I just totally hit go again. Let me pause this one second. There we go. So cancel. I'm going to hit cancel, and then I'll be able to come back in and hit that dad. So let me unload that. There we go. I'm like, get out of there. All right, so let me set that aside, and then I will load the vinyl in just a second. All right, so I'm just rolling this down. So I'm keeping it together. All right, so just like that. Once you get to this piece, what you need to do, I've already got it nice and tight. You're going to kind of let go a little bit. So you're going to let it kind of do its thing, and it'll stop on its own. Flip it over, kind of bend this back a little bit, and then we're going to take our glue gun. I just add some to the bottom here, and then you're just going to stick it there. And that's it. So, so easy. So hopefully you guys can see that there, right? And then you're just going to start to pinch and fold those edges. And that's it. And then there you go. You have your rolled flower. So it's super, super easy to do. So easy. Now I'm going to show you guys again, but let me put my glue gun back and let me unload this and load my vinyl. So give me two seconds. Now this is something that's super fun to me. It's one of my favorite parts. All right, so whenever it comes to unloading these, I always pull the excess cardstock off first. And so if you kind of pull it straight up, if you will, it's going to kind of come off of here in like this little spiral thing. So that's just my favorite part. 
And so if you guys make paper balls, you guys let me know if that's your favorite part as well. Then to remove these, get this out of the way here. The best thing, like I always tell you guys, is to just kind of peel them off. So I kind of get a hold of that like that. So you guys can see this. Get another little piece. I start at one end and then basically pull. There we go. And then we got one more. Super duper easy. And like I said, that blue mat just releases these so nicely. Okay, so here we go. I use forceps. All right, so force, I never thought about that. Super, super smart. Okay, so I'm going back over here. I know you guys can't see my screen, but I'm just gonna go ahead and switch to, let me see if I can actually bring back up the screen really quickly. That way I can show you guys with the vinyl and I'll go ahead and load my vinyl. I'm using StarCraft vinyl today. So I'm gonna go ahead and load that on my mount. And there we have it. All right, here we go. So over here in Cricut Design Space, what I've got is vinyl. This is not HTV, so I don't need a mirror. So we're gonna go ahead and hit continue here. And then we are gonna choose, um, I just use the premium. I always use that across the board, but this is the Starcraft white mat, one of my favorites. So I'm just gonna come up here to premium vinyl, permanent glossy, and now we're ready to load it. All right, so we can go ahead and drop it back down here and get ready to load. So I'm just gonna go ahead and load it one more time. We're gonna hit that load button, just like that. And then we'll just kind of let that do its thing and then we'll hit go. So give it just a second, there we go. And then, all right. Give it one more second, there we go. So we're gonna go ahead and get that flashing there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit go. All right, so while this is cutting out, so this is gonna cut out DAD for us. <laughs> um, once again, I use a curling tool for the best. Oh, wow. Okay, so are you talking about like the quilling tool? Um, yeah, I definitely wanna know all of the details. I have used a drill. Yes, I've heard about that too. So um, a, a, a drill and a um, cotter pin. I've also heard about um, a bobby pin on that too, but I forget about those. Is that a cotter pin? Am I saying that right? Um, but I totally forgot about the drill. So that is one way to do that as well. So you would put it in there where you would put your drill bit and then you can do the exact same thing. So tons of way. I'm loving the tips that you guys are share, sharing today. Now, remember when I get done with this, I always go home and I read your guys' comments. So make sure you guys are dropping those below. All right, I mount my quilling tool into the small drill and just go slow. Yes, love, love, love that. I need to do a tutorial on that as well. So you guys let me know down below. If you guys wanna see that um, with the drill, let us know and we will definitely do that. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my material here. Set this guy out of the way. And I'm gonna go ahead and fold this and kind of push it on over. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get it out of our way just a little bit so I can get that hot glue gun in here in a better position. All right, so now that we are, are here, let me go ahead and show you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and roll one more, but I was thinking I'm gonna do it with the tweezers here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop you guys back over here. All right, so once again, let's recap one more time and then we're gonna start to put this thing together. All right, so whenever you get your paper flower, number one, whatever color your flower, if you're working with like a color double-sided paper, if it's the same color on each side, don't worry about it. So whatever color is the inside of your flower, so whenever you go to roll this inside, so I want this darker blue, whatever color you start to fold inside, that's the color of your flower. All right, so if you were using tweezers, same thing. You're just gonna go ahead and get a hold of that and then just keep going. It's like trying to hold my tweezers there, keeping it down. All right, once you get it going to so far, there we go. I can get my tweezers to stay still because at first they're gonna wanna open, open, open. But now they're just kind of holding themselves there, if that makes sense. So now I'm gonna go ahead and keep twisting. Now, if you have the tweezers from Cricut that actually, and I think Fiskars makes them, that holds itself shut, you could do those as well. Like I said, once you start to take off, this guy will hold itself there. So I spin and spin and spin until I feel like I can't use my quilling tool anymore. And then I'll take off on my own. So it's really, really easy, guys, and so many different ideas to do with these. Once again, I love making these for um, even teacher's gifts. You could create where it looks like an apple shape. Um, you could create a heart out of these flowers. I mean, the possibilities are endless. All right, a baby's room and putting the sweet babies on, like the baby's birth announcements. I know that's something that's really big right now as well. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and once you get, that's all the way like this. We're gonna fold that base of that bottom. And then once again, I'm gonna let it go and it's gonna do its thing. There we go. 
So then I'll kind of hold it, we'll pop this piece back, and then I'm adding glue right here on that back side. And then we're just going to close it like that. And it's gonna glue all of these layers, if that makes sense, okay? So there we have it. So then I'm just kind of pinching these. So I'm holding the center with one hand and I'm using my fingers to bend this over. There you have it. So nice, love it. Now, what I think would be so cool to do with this as well is to do a rainbow color so you can get all of your flowers. I'm gonna bring my flowers up here. You can get all of your flowers and do them. So like one layer is yellow, pink, you know, do a whole rainbow of colors would be so cute, especially if you could find some real boho colors and then take a rainbow, cut it out with SVG, SVG, <laughs> take one of our rainbow SVGs and cut it out with vinyl it would be so, so cute. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and let's see, I think I'm going to start with applying the vinyl to the box first. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, here we go, a clean cloth. We're gonna start with this first. All right, that way whenever I flip it back over, you guys can see the whole thing. So I'm just gonna take a clean cloth here. You can take rubbing alcohol and clean the front of that glass. There we go. And then I'm gonna go ahead and weed this out really quickly. So for this part with our vinyl, you're gonna need a piece of transfer tape. I've also got a piece of parchment paper. So if you wanna try the parchment paper hack where it's gonna help you find your placement as well. Go ahead and quickly weed this one out. This design is so easy. Such a simple design, it's so cute. We also have some available too, like Mama. And um, so that would be really, really cute as well. This would even make us a great gift for, for a sister as well. Be sure to give a thumbs up. Thank you so much, Brittany. So Brittany is down there in the comments as well if you guys need any sort of help. All right, so there we go. So I've got this. So let's go ahead and get to our transfer tape here Give me just a second to find it you know when you start your parchment your parchment your transfer tape and then you're trying to find that start again that's me right now okay so i'm gonna go on top there and then we're gonna take our little squeegee tool all right and just carefully pick that up i'll try not to shake that table too much there we have it all right now, uh, once we get done with this, once again, we're gonna do Q&A. So if you guys have any questions along the way about this project, make sure you guys are dropping those down below and I will help answer those. Brittany is also down in the comments. So if you need anything, she's also there to help as well. All right, there we go. Once again, I am so excited that you guys are here and I wanna hear all about the projects you guys are working on. I love this project. Thank you so, so much. All right, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is flip this over so there we go we've got our design and then with that parchment paper you can place that right here i've cut it down to like a five by five listen does anybody watch like storage wars you know where it's like the every time i think of the word five by five i think of the storage unit <laughs> you know what i'm talking about it just cracks me up every time i say it okay so what i'm going to do is use that parchment paper to line that up so basically if you see here i've got um I've got this stuck down here, that piece of transfer. And then this is not stuck to the glass yet because I have the parchment there. So now we can kind of play around with it and figure out the exact placement for this. So let me flip it around so I can see. <laughs> Give me two seconds here. So I'm just gonna make sure this is a good placement and then I'll show you guys about moving it. Let me move it over just a little bit. All right, there we go. All right, so I think I'm gonna drop it right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip this back around so you guys can see. All right, so with this pa parchment paper hack, you can see I can move around and figure out exactly where I want it to go. Then once I'm ready for that placement, now I can move that parchment and I can lay down from the top to the bottom and I'm gonna get that absolute perfect placement. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and get this just like that. All right. There we go. All right, so then once we've got that down, take that transfer and peel out a corner. There we go. So cute, how adorable is that? Now I know that we've got that picture in there so it's kind of hard to see. So there is step one, so we've got that down. Now you can also put that at the end but I want you guys to have the big reveal. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it over and I've already opened a majority of these just to kind of save some time because mine had a ton of these backings. <laughs> so now we're just gonna pull this off just like this. So 
what I'm going to do is we want to, when we do this, you know, it's got this little lip that's going to go. So all the way around, I want to make sure I'm leaving enough room on the edge. So whenever I go to put this back and you may have to stuff your flowers in, which you guys will see here in a second. So we're going to go ahead and just remove this really quickly. Now, depending on what kind of shadow box you got, um, sometimes they are kind of weird. I've never had one of those in there before. Sometimes this is like burlap or you could put a piece of cardstock to cover the back if you wanted to. You could paint this if you wanted. Um, it's almost like a velvet, but I'm just going to leave mine. Okay. So let's see here. I'll put the vinyl on the inside. Hey, that is super, super smart to put the vinyl. So what you would do is you would reverse this and you would put it on the inside. That way you can't fill it. And that is so smart. Thank you so much for that tip. I love it. This is why I love working with you guys. You guys have the best stuff. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is, let's go ahead and start to glue these down. So I only need nine flowers for this project. So what I'm gonna do, go ahead and do is remember my pieces here. I think I've gotta roll one more flower. Nope, I got it right here. I already rolled it. Here we go. All right, so I've kinda got a little color scheme thing going on here. So I think I'm gonna do that. And then I have these like mint ones here in the center. There we have it. So I'm gonna do something like that. That way they're all blue, all right? I thought this would be cute to put in dad's office on a shelf, you know, because us girls like to take over, right? We take over decor, so we like to decorate. So um, you really wanna get these in the center. So you really wanna center it because remember, we need that little bit of a lip all the way around to be able to go on this. So once you get these lined up, get them exactly where you want them, you can go ahead and take that glue gun. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our glue gun here I'm gonna add glue to the bottom and I'm gonna carefully set these one by one back into their position. So that way I can kind of keep them and I can see by doing this and lining them up first, I can see where they're going. Now, once again, if you were doing like an eight by eight shadow box, it may take you 20 flowers, 30 flowers. So you just gotta get one, this is what I kind of do, get an entire roll. So cut out, say for example, like right here, I cut out three and I knew I needed three across. So if I was doing an eight by eight, say for example, it took me five across, I could start bringing them down and figure out five, 10, 15, 20 to figure out exactly how many I need and then go from there. All right, there we have it. And you can also, so for example, this flower bundle comes with so many different styles. You can do all of the styles. So if you wanna mix and match your flowers, you wanna add in the leaves if you wanted to, you could definitely do that as well. This would be kind of cool to cut the leaves out even in like gold. Um, and glitter gold and things like that would be really, really cute. Another thing I was going to show you guys today, but I thought since it's for dad, I'll leave off the glitter. <laughs> but you can also take and put a little bit of glue on here. Say, for example, like your, um, say, for example, like that Tombow. I could kind of even dip it almost in Elmer's glue like this, and then I could dip it into a glitter and have the glitter tops. So that's just another tip as well. All right. There we have it. And then I think we just have one more, correct? Okay, so our last one. There we go. So cute. I love these flowers. Oh my gosh. And like I said, this is my favorite flower, flower number six, in case you guys are just not joining us. You can always replay this later and um, slow it down and watch it again and again. How cute is this? Is this not adorable? Even if you took, for example, if you took a canvas and you did the reverse canvas and you put these on in the inside of the reverse canvas and had no front, that would be so cute as well. Imagine even like if you were going to do wall decor, say for example, on like a, like a heavy, um, what do you call it? Like a poster board, if you will. And then you had it on the back like this and you created like a 12 by 12 and you had like four of them that went together to create this whole home decor piece. So cute. All right, so now what we need to do is take our shadow box and we're just going to get this guy back in there. Like, so you see that we left the edges. It just made it so easy to get in there. Then we're going to close these. Now I'm only going to close a couple because, you know, here's a bunch. I just say that and I say I almost close them all. Let me do this. Also, tip, if you're struggling with these with your hands, use your little weeding tool to push on them and open them as well. How cute is this? Is that not adorable? I love it so, so stinking much. The colors are gorgeous. This would be so cute to put on dad's bookshelf in his workspace, in his little office. This would be cute even to put in a baby's room to do mama and dada, I think would be so cute. Um, like I said, just the possibilities are endless. Once again, we have mama designs like this too that you could do. 
Um, make this for grandma and grandpa would be so cute as well. But I absolutely love the way that this came out. So, so cute. So uh, there you guys have it. Easy peasy. Are you guys ready for Q&A? Let's go ahead and see what questions you guys have for me today. All right. So let's go ahead and let's see. Largest is 11.5 by 11.5. That is correct. So whenever it comes to Cricut Design Space, you can only cut 11 by 11.5 by 11.5 with a 12 by 12 mat. Now, if you have, do you guys remember when Cricut had the 12 by 24 sheets of cardstock? If you guys have any of those left, you can cut those as well. But yes, yeah, so for example, you can't go, and that's the size that I've cut, you can do four. So I cut out four at the first time I was doing it. So the number that I gave you, those exact dimensions, you can cut out four on a cardstock of the 12 by 12 sheet. All right, let's see, there is a ratio of some math. Yes, yeah, so the, I've answered this, but I'm gonna go ahead and go over it one more time. Um, so is there a ratio or some math that you can know or how big is the flower design? What size is and will co the coil to? So for example, um, this one right here, I've sized it for you guys. Absolutely perfect. Um, if you guys definitely refer back to when we were doing this in Cricut Design Space, you guys can screenshot. I've got those numbers there for you. When we get done, I'll try to see if we can't add that to the description for you guys as well, just so it's easy access. But when you are done, if you guys want to know the uh, measurements, once you're got it folded, I forgot to tell you guys that because that's a question I get all the time too, which is a very, very good one, especially if you're trying to figure it out. So one point, it's looking about 1.75 is what these flowers are. 1.75 if you do them. If you do them the exact size that I have done, you're going to get almost a two inch by two inch flower. So it's 1.75. All right, let's see. What else do we have here? Um, let's see. Um, so let's go ahead before I get too far into this. Um, I know you guys are waiting for that giveaway details, right? So we are doing a mega giveaway. Now the trick is, not the trick, but the how do I explain this? The fun part of this is you have to head on over to Facebook. You can use this QR code right here so you guys can screenshot it. And what I love about this one is you have to head on over to the Facebook community group. Now, I haven't said what it is yet, so give me one second. So you have to head on over to the Facebook community group. We do this so it allows everybody to participate because I know that we do a lot of giveaways live, and this one is so everyone can participate. This one is going to go until Tuesday. I believe we're going to have some details here in a second. Now, what are we giving away? We are giving away a Sawgrass SG500. I am so pumped for it. So for all of you guys that have been waiting, all of you Sublimation fans, we are finally giving away a Sawgrass SG500. So one lucky winner is going to be able to get in there and start creating those Sublimation crafts. And hey, if you already are sublimating, you can upgrade or have another one if you want to. So in order to participate, make sure you guys, once again, you can use this QR code here or we got a link below in the description and you guys can head on over to the Facebook community group. If you guys are not already a part of it anyways, that's where we host giveaways. We have um, freebies. Plus you can find hundreds of thousands of other crafters just like yourself with tons of inspiration. So over there, you are able to share your projects. So if you recreate this today, you can go over there, share it so we can see it. And then I can go give it all of the love as well as all of the other crafty members. So once again, if you guys want to be a part of this and you want to have a chance to win, it's going to end on Tuesday. And all you have to do is scan this QR code. So if you guys are watching this later, you guys can definitely scan this QR code. Or you can hit the link below and enter for a chance to win a Sawgrass SG500. All right, so let's go ahead and get ready for a Q&A. Now, while we're getting ready for this Q&A, I want to know, what do you guys think about this? Who is pumped? Who is excited? And who has already, if you're already a part of the Facebook community group, you have already known about this before we went live, I believe. So you've probably already entered. All right, so here we go. Can we make this on the Joy? Actually, you can, but they're going to be tiny. So for example, when I used to really be big into paper crafts, making cards and things like that, I used to purchase, um, I'm trying to think of the name. It was like, her, you guys already know what I'm talking about. Those little bitty baby flowers that you can get on the stems. So with your Joy, you're going to get those little bitty baby ones. So if you want those little bitty ones, that's going to be perfect for your Cricut Joy. And you're going to be able to cut out probably... I would say with the 12 by 12, you're probably going to be able to cut out maybe three flowers as well, two um, with the 12 by 12 by, what is it, four and a half? All right, here we go. Let's see. Do you know the dimensions 
Let's see. Do you know the dimensions to use on the drawing? Maybe that was a question. Did I miss that? <laughs> um, the dimensions, I do not know. But if you guys want to know and y'all want to see that happen, you guys want to see a project done or even paper flowers done with a Cricut Joy, I want to see Joy. So start dropping that down below. Just start typing out the word Joy and we will get there. So if you also want to see the big paper flowers, make sure you guys write big. So Joy for the baby, big for the big paper flowers, and I'll definitely get it done. All right, so let's see. Can you use a deep cut blade in the silver housing no the deep well hold on no the deep cut blade is in the black housing now i don't know i've never done that before that's a question to be had so i think I'm, i kind of think the black housing maybe is a little bit shorter because i almost feel like the same blade but it's just um the dimensions of the black ones a little bit you know that's something i'm going to test i'm going to come back to you very soon i'm going to notate this comment and i promise you i'm going to come back to it very soon all right let's see here have you made a tutorial on decorating graduation hats? I have not, but we are definitely, that is something that is on our list. If you guys have something you want to see us create, make sure you guys are dropping those in the comments below because we read these. So we read the comments on either if it's live or a pre-recorded video, we listen and we take note and we get to those as soon as we can. So that is definitely one that is coming. All right, let's see here. Do you have a tip for not getting air bubbles when applying the vinyl? So whenever it comes to applying vinyl, so there is a wet method if you wanted to, say for example, adding it on a glass like this, you could actually spritz your glass with a little bit of water and then apply it. And then you would work out those bubbles. That's one way to do it. Or just being nice and slow. And really, honestly, if you're new, don't, don't fret at all. Everybody gets air bubbles. So you think that everybody, it's not. Everybody gets some sort of bubbles along the way. All right, let's see here. What is your best advice for the size flowers to a craft surface? Let's see, one second. What is your best advice to the size for a craft surface? If you're talking about this, this is, so for example, like the shadow boxes, this is my absolute favorite. So hopefully I'm answering that correct, correctly. So it's about, so basically if you go about 5.5 or 5.6 wide on those flowers, you're going to get almost a two, two inch flower. And honestly, it's my favorite size. All right, let's see here. What size is the box again? This one is a six by six, um, but I have also done the eight by eight. So this one right here is six by six. All right, let's see here. What is, okay, what time does this end for the dollar? Okay, hold on one second. When time does the end of the month dollar deal start? So the dollar deal is going to be on Wednesday. So we do it at the very last week of the month on a Wednesday, every single, well, we're actually switching up time. So <laughs> bear with us on that. So depending on what country you're in, because I want to say that it is the 25th of May, just in case it gives you an exact number. So I think even for, Brittany can answer that down below, but I want to say, even if you're in another country, it would still be 25th of May for you. Um, I'm going to let Brittany answer that. She may be able to do that a little bit quicker than me. But basically, if you want to really know that it's always that last Wednesday of the month. All right. Do you do, you do the tutorials with the Silhouette Cameo 4? I don't see anything anymore. We have them coming. So if you guys see, hopefully you guys can see back there, right? I purchased the pink one. So I purchased the Silhouette Cameo 4 in pink. I had actually owned the Plus model, so it was a little bit bigger. And lugging it back and forth is kind of a little bit of a hassle. Plus, not everybody has that Plus model. So what I did was I went ahead and I purchased the Silhouette Cameo 4. So we've actually been recording some. You guys should start seeing those rolling out pretty soon. And we'll have some lives coming with that very soon. So stay tuned. Lots of stuff coming with that guy. All right, let's see here. Good source for shadow boxes, um, preferred depth. Shadow boxes, honestly, we've linked some down below, I do believe, to Amazon. One of my favorite places, honestly, locally, if you guys have a Michaels, is Michaels. Um, Hobby Lobby gets some sometimes, but not the ones I really want. I end up paying too much for them. Michaels usually has buy one, get one free and stuff like that. Um, and this depth, I think it's just a pretty common depth. I'm not too sure what it is. And let me actually just open it back up just to see because I've never really done it but this one right here is pretty standard so I can I think I should, should be able to tell you because there is I mean there truly is there's one shadow box one time I bought from Hobby Lobby and it was a smaller like a five by seven because you can also do this like a five no four by six and the depth was not very so they kind of squished my flowers it wasn't bad but they were more up against the gas the glass than this so for this one here let me got my little measuring thing here okay this one here is one and a half deep. So the depth of this is one and a half. There we go. 
I'm going to go ahead and drop this guy back in here. And what's cool is you can even hang these on the wall so that you don't have to just put them on a table or anything like that. All right, can you put the stems? Yes, you can. You can put stems on here. And also, that's another thing. If you want to see how to put the stems on here, um, leave a comment down below as well, and we'll get to that as well. Just write out stems, and that's another one we will make note for. Like I said, we have a lot of tutorials coming with paper flowers. So whatever you guys want to see, make sure you all are dropping that down below. All right, let's see, what is the largest you can make this flower file? Um, the largest is going to be the 11.5 by 11.5 because that's as wide as you can make with your Cricut. Now, if you're using, say, for example, the Silhouette Plus or the Pro, I mean, that thing's huge. So, I mean, essentially, if you can find big cardstock, you can even do like the poster boards if you wanted to, um, but you essentially could go really big. Um, but when it comes to a Cricut, a more standard, you're talking about at least 11.5, which is probably going to shrink it down. Let me think for a second, because 5 by 5 would be 2. So you'd probably be looking around an 8-inch uh, flower or so. All right, let's see here. Where did you get your card stock from? I actually got it from Michael's. And I'm going to show you guys that really quick. So let me drop down here and grab it. Seconds. I had it set aside. All right, so this one right here, I'm going to drop y'all's for a sec. This one, now I've linked you guys to some other ones as well. I do believe you guys can grab online. This was on a clearance, so y'all may want to go check your Michael's clearance for 10 bucks. You guys can snag this right here, and it's called, a, it's a paper pad, but really, it's it's a cardstock. So hopefully you guys can kind of see here, this is a cardstock. It's more than a paper, maybe a little bit, I would say a medium. And like I said, so hopefully you guys can see that. That's a two-toned, but this thing has, what, 54 sheets, and I like that it was a rainbow effect. So that's where I got that from. All right, let's see here. Do we have any more? Let's see. Is the rolling flowers as tedious as I imagine? It absolutely is not. So it truly is pretty quick. So whenever you get them going, which we've already rolled a few, you're going to, the first few that I'm going to be honest, the first few, I'm going to roll one more for you guys really quickly. So the first few that you're going to do, it's going to seem a little strange. So whenever you start to do this, you may want to roll it too tight or it's going to get a little wonky like this. So you guys are going to want to kind of do something along like this. But what you're wanting to do is create a circle. So think of trying to keep this round. So I'm pushing as I'm going, I'm pressing and I am forming this to a circle. So I want to keep it as tight as possible. And so it, once you start making these, probably a good, um, maybe even five, you're, if you're a beginner, maybe even not, maybe the first one, you're going to have it down. I promise you, it is so easy. And then you're going to be addicted <laughs> to making these. And sometimes um, once I get going really, really quick, I can even just kind of sit here and do these by hand, honestly. So, uh, and I have found, like, I love this quilling tool. If you guys have the old one from Cricut that they used to carry, Love that, but I did link a quilling tool. That's one of my absolute favorites. Could not find it before I went live, of course. I like it because the handle on that one is better for your hands. So if you're somebody like me that has a little bit of arthritis in your hands, it is a lot easier on your hands. All right, so once you get it going, you've got to kind of let go and let it do its thing. So you can literally drop this thing, and it's okay. So then you're going to flip over that back little circle. You're going to add a little bit of glue there, and then you're just going to flip it over. And there you have it. And then after that, you're just kind of pinching down. So you're pinching down and then it's just finishing off your flower. So it's super duper easy. All right, so let's see here. Do we have, what Cricut item do you recommend to start with? What Cricut item do you, are you talking about like, are you talking about like this one, the quilling tool? If you're talking about this one, they do not have this anymore. Now, if you're talking about like which Cricut machine, I highly recommend that you guys check out the Cricut Explorer models. It's one of my favorites. Um, I'm not somebody that really cuts a lot of, you know, fabric or anything like that with the maker. Now, we do have maker tutorials here, but as, you know, personally, if it was me giving you advice for your first one, it would be an Explorer model. Now, if you have enough money, just go straight for the Explorer 3, because eventually this is the newest model. I would just go straight for it. All right, let's see here. What else do we have? Can these patterns be trans translated to use with a Cameo? Um, yes, these can be. So these can be used. There is a DXF file as well. So all of our files always include something for the silhouette as well. So you can use this on whatever die cutting machine that you have. All right, let's see here. Was that glue gun 
or white glue or hot glue. This is um this is hot glue. So in the way that I, I like to buy the this is the sticks, but I also purchase the ropes. Have you guys ever seen the ropes? So it's really cool because it comes in this bag. You can usually get it for I think two dollars and something, even locally at Walmart and things. But um you can get it, it's coiled up. So that way you can just keep going forever. But these are the longer sticks. It's one of my favorites. And this is the Sherbonder Lynn Lily. I love it. Now they have a plane. They're they're normal black and I think lime green color, but if you want a cute one, I mean, go with the Lynn Lily. <laughs> All right, let's see here. What else do we have? How do you figure the number of flowers you need? Okay, so the way that I do this is, so I'll start out because you're gonna, you're gonna. I already know I need to cut several, right? So, say for example, I can cut three or four. So that's what I started with today. So I know that I can cut four on a twelve by twelve. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the four. I know I can cut two with eight and a half by 11. So I may cut out two sheets of that, right? So I'll cut those out. Then I'll start to line them up. So for example, I'll take my flowers here. I'll get them inside my, I just set them on my glass like this and I'll start to line them up. I could even scoot this guy over. I could take two flowers to figure that out. And then I can scoot down one set. And that's how I just kind of figure it out. Now you could, if you wanted to, if I measure these and I know they're two inches, I could measure across and I could say, okay, this is going to be five and a half divided by two inches, how many can I fit? So that's another way that you can do it too, and then so on and so forth, and you can just do that as well. But to me, um, I use the crafter tools. You know how we are, this, that, stuff like that. So I just line them up honestly and just kind of count them out like that, and then I'll keep going. And you may have to, you may calculate and then have to go back and cut one or two, but um, for example, a six by six, you can usually do this with nine. All right, let's see here. Is it beneficial to have a joy a maker and the large silhouette cutting, uh, large cameo. I see they are now have a 24 inch and was wondering if having both would be good for making different sizes, depending on what you're doing. So, you know, if you're somebody that knows you're going to make bigger projects like that, you definitely don't have to have them all. So, for example, I do believe the silhouette cameo four does cut some materials like the maker does. So essentially you could get away with just having the pro model of the silhouette because you're going to be able to do small and you're going to be able to do really big stuff. So um, just depending, if you know that you're going to do really big projects. So for example, if you may get into the business of putting car decals down a car or on the side of those little car trailers, um, you may want to go to that. But if you're just going to be doing projects kind of like this, you could just stick with you know either a Cricut or even the Silhouette. All right, let's see here. Is this a design bundle flower or Cricut? So this is a design bundle flower. We actually have a ton of them. So we have, so this one right now that we're showing you today is actually included in a bundle. So um, we have it in this great big bundle. And I wanted to show you guys because the sell on that bundle is actually coming to an end in about three days. But we have, so if you go and you search paper flower, we have tons of flowers. Whether you guys are wanting to make the ones that are the big pieces and you're going to glue them together and create a huge flower that you can hang on your wall, um, or whether you're wanting these rolled flowers, lots of different styles you can make where it looks like um, sunflowers and all sorts of different flowers like mums and stuff like that. But this is, this is a design bundle. All right, let's see. What blade should I use to cut felt to make flowers? I tried the rotary and the knife blade yesterday with success. So yes, if you hands down, if you have the Cricut Maker, use that rotary. I love it with felt. It works so well. Now, I do have a trick for you. If you have your Explorer models, you can definitely still cut felt. What you can do is take, say, for example, contact paper, um, your transfer tape. You can put it on one side of your felt, load that on your Cricut mat with the transfer tape face facing against your mat, then cut it out because it's going to hold your felt in place and you can cut it with a regular blade. Easy peasy. All right, let's see here. Um, my Cricut is actually tearing some of my flowers. Is the um, is my blade? I've lost so much cardstock. Yes, it's your blade. So um, I was talking about that tip earlier. So if you are starting to see number one, the tip, no matter what, if you're working with paper, um, when you go to load your first piece of cardstock, always double check this. I don't care if you cut vinyl last. You always check this because that will cause tearing. Then once you load your next piece. You want to go ahead and just pop it out and do it again or maybe every other piece because those little pieces of paper will get in there and kind of create lint but every time you do this it'll just pop it right out and sometimes you may have to gently do this or kind of blow on it you can use some candy or as well so always check your blade when you're working with paper crafts now if it is tearing it then more than likely you need a new blade 
the paper is super hard on your blades. It goes through your blades so much faster. You could probably have a blade for years on just vinyl and um, HTV. HTV and vinyl is not as harsh as paper. So you may want to designate, like I said, a separate blade. But if, it, if you're doing that, you're, it's time for a new blade. All right, let's see here. I do believe that was the last question. And once again, a four hour giveaway. If you guys are interested, make sure you guys head on over to our Facebook community group. I'm so excited because this allows everybody to hang out and participate. Now I know we can't please everybody, but we really do try. So even though if you don't have a Facebook, for example, and you can't participate over there, we will have giveaways here. We do it all of the time. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And make sure you guys subscribe and hit the notification bell here for our YouTube channel so you guys can see when we're going live and when we are announcing new videos and all of those things. But once again, I highly encourage you guys to use this uh, QR code over here so you guys can take you, well, this way, if you will. It's going to take you straight over to the giveaway and you're going to find all of those details and how you can participate there. Once again, this is going to run until next Tuesday. So if you guys are watching this on the replay, you guys are going to get to participate, and we are giving away a Sawgrass SG500. Once again, thank you guys so much for participating and hanging out and all of your tips and tricks. I absolutely loved them. Can't wait to go home and read them, and I will see you guys on the next one. Bye for now.